Should you buy a used cheap luxury car? That becomes a difficult question because it depends who you are. We'll talk about the type of personalities that would buy a used luxury car versus a brand new non-luxury make like this. I've had relatives, friends, family, even my wife asked me the question about that exact same thing. Let's talk about it and make some comparisons right now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Play. So let's do a quick walk around on a great example. Here we are, the Toyota Camry XSE, loosely based on the Lexus ES, or even somewhere between the ES and IS model. You, you can even see the Lexus outline here. It looks very Lexus-like as well. Being from the same family, that's not surprising. But for 31 grand starting up to about 35,000, you can get either get a four cylinder, two and a half liter engine that makes about 200 horse, or you can get three and a half liter V6 that makes about 300 horsepower. The thing is you have to wonder how much luxury do you need when you have all the luxury that you need in this particular car. 19 inch wheels, high gloss finish on the mirrors, high gloss finish all the way around. You've even got the full panel sunroof. How about the little high gloss rear wing on the back as well and you've got these little vents at the back bumper here. Here you also have the quad tailpipes makes it look more aggressive and a little bit of an imitation splitter. And you can get these with all wheel drive or front wheel drive. And you have to ask the question, is there any luxury you're doing without in this particular car? Well, not really, because you have leather, eight-way, fully adjustable driver and passenger seats, AC, navigation. You have everything you could possibly ask for in this car. And the interior is every bit as good as anything in the Lexus department. So the real question is, what do you get in the luxury world that's comparable in terms of price and value as this car? And how old do you have to go to get into a luxury vehicle to have something comparable? And yes, they even have dual climate and keyless ignition. They have virtually everything that you'll find in a modern luxury car. And so the best comparison that we can make to the XSE Toyota would be right here, the Lexus ES. This is the ES350, shares the same three and a half liter V6 that we just saw in the XSE Camry. But the difference is this car essentially is about $5,000 US more. Trying to understand why that is, but let's take a quick look at the Lexus here. The Lexus has a slightly dressed up grille, the headlight assembly, everything's just a little bit more blinged out. You've got little extra vents. You've got this more interesting mirror, which is more like the LC500 style. We move around, the entire car is color matched. We also have the full panoramic sunroof like you have on the Toyota as well. These Lexus cars actually have a slightly better finished back end. For sure, they're a little bit more dressed up. You've got the nicer finished tips. These are very, very nice cars, but in V6 format, both of these cars can crack the zero to 60 in about 5.7 seconds. So what kind of Lexus can you get for the comparable Toyota? Well, actually about a two-year-old Lexus. One of these, you'd have to get up 2018 to get into a 2020 Camry XSE with the V6. That's the difference. Is it worth it to you? And then what do we have right behind us here? It is a BMW 535. This one happens to have the all-wheel drive system or X-Drive, if you will. The 5 Series has always been the epitome of sports sedans in the BMW world and truly is one of the benchmarks for performance driving. This car was over $60,000 brand new and it sits, this particular car here is sitting with about 15,000 miles on it, very low miles. And if you can believe it, this has the N55, that's the single turbo three liter engine. And if you buy a year or two newer, you can get yourself in the B58, which which is the newest revised version of the turbo six cylinder engine and arguably the best of the BMWs in the six cylinder variations in recent years. There's no question this Bavarian beast has a lot of style over above and beyond a Toyota Camry but did you realize that you can actually get this car for the same price as a base Camry XSE. You can get into a 15, 16 model year like this or even a 17 model year for the price of a brand new V6 Camry XSE. These cars have depreciated so much that they do provide an immense amount of value. I mean, just look at them. I mean, you've got your classic BMW headlights with the angel eyes, which have been changed in recent years. All-wheel drive system. You've also got little accents on this car here. LED markers here and the gloss mirrors. Of course, this car doesn't have the full panoramic, but it does have a standard sunroof. And as we saw in the Camry XSE, you'll notice it has the little wing to give it a little bit of a sporting touch. And circle around to the back, and we get the dual exhaust systems because this is the Turbo 6. And as I said, X-Drive because it's the all-wheel drive. And then the interior is actually second to almost none. Such a high quality, well put together interior in these BMWs. So you probably ask yourself, how can you possibly get this much BMW for the price of a new Camry or which is actually the better value, which is the way to go? 
And then next over here, we have a 2017 BMW. You can get these in a diesel because the diesels are no longer available today, but they were back then. You can also, this one's an actual 50i, and they were over 60 grand brand new in the US dollar, in the US market. There's no doubt this is pretty much the epitome of SUVs. Strong, bulletproof. The diesel engines are great, but the 50i, the N63 engines aren't that great. They cook themselves inside out. You've got panoramic sunroof above. You've also got a very luxurious and spacious interior in these cars. Color molded and soft touch, LEDs, heads up display, and you've got the awesome dual exhaust on this system. Very sporty SUV and can actually tow something too. These have a substantial towing capacity. Let's not forget the color key flares as well as the rocker panels and of course LEDs on the latest models. So how can a 2017 BMW X5, still a late model car just rolling out of warranty, be worth as much as a base model V6 Camry. How does that even work? Well, believe it or not, there's a bit of a phenomenon and which is the better value for you and me. So the next car we can look at here is a C300 right here. And these are great value in the Mercedes world. Let's take a look around here. So there's a C300 and then there's a C43 AMG with all wheel drive and a nine speed automatic transmission in either model. This one here has the four cylinder, two liter engine that makes about 242 horsepower has the cool little dual exhaust c300 that's the four banger but you also have the panoramic sunroof and an interior that is just luscious inside as well chock full amenities these cars weren't really cheap obviously you can get one of these right now a 2018 2019 with 20 30 000 miles on it you can get for the same price as a base model brand new xse Toyota Camry. You can also get a, six, a 17 version of this in the C43 AMG with about 30, 40,000 miles for the same price. Also for a four cylinder base XSE Camry, just for an example. So let's take some more look around. Got the beautiful LED headlights with the little wing on the top and you've got the star grill as well as these other little accents. Pretty swanky looking machine all the way through. But Mercedes takes a real hit in depreciation. And why is that? We'll get to that in a moment, but ultimately everybody knows Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Jaguar, Alfa Romeo, they're all going to cost a lot more money once they're out of warranty and repairs start coming in. Maintenance is going to cost a lot more as well. And that's the thing. People don't want to be stuck into what they consider a money pit. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a money pit. It's not literally that way. If you can do some of the work yourself, it doesn't have to be a true pit, but that's what people are fearful of. And that's why they go with the Toyota. And that's why the value is there with those cars. So it's really a great question. Do you buy a cheap used luxury car? And for many people, the question is, or the answer is yes. And for other people, it's a flat no. If it were my parents or in-laws or somebody like that asking me, should I buy a used cheap luxury car? My answer would be a definitively no. If my young 18 year old daughter was asking me, should I buy a used luxury car? Let's say five years old, I would say no. But if it was a good friend of mine who had a little bit of capability to work on some of his own cars, I would answer absolutely yes. You can't get a better deal on a car like that. The other obvious answer is if you have a friend that happens to have a little extra money but doesn't really care to buy the brand new and the latest and the greatest, but he doesn't mind spending a little bit money on additional maintenance or repairs, absolutely. But you'll know that person. You don't know if they're capable of owning that car properly. I mean, if I had a 16 year old nephew that asked me, hey, you know, I saw this seven year old BMW 7 series and it's a great deal. Should I buy one? Again, I would absolutely tell that person, no way, run from that car. It will keep you in the hole. Yes, they're absolute money pits if you buy the wrong car that's poorly maintained. But you can also be rewarded with some of the most spectacular driving experiences and values on the market. I mean, what does the Toyota Camry XSE do for you? Well, it delivers a decent level of performance. It has a decent level of luxury. And on paper, it's all well and good. But unfortunately, that's it. It's on paper. Some of these other cars I've showed you from BMW and Benz, they don't just show it on paper. It's not just about the numbers. It is really also about the driving dynamics, the experience. A lot of these other brands too have rear wheel drive or all wheel drive where some of the lower cost alternatives like the XSE for example might be on a front wheel drive platform which isn't really the driver's dream. So the real answer to this question isn't that simple. It really boils down to your priorities, your comfort level and the kind of bankroll or capabilities that you have as a mechanic or a do-it-yourselfer. That's really what it boils down to and because for me I've always been able to work around it a little bit. I've always been able to be a little handy and fix some of the smaller repairs do some of the basic maintenance now we're not talking about being able to repair an engine or rebuild an engine or a transmission you don't need to it's all the nickel and dime stuff if you're willing to have a small toolbox with a, a minor set of tools you're able to save yourself a fortune so that's where it becomes great value even for my wife when she wanted a new car we looked at something that was two years old we got the certified pre-owned warranty that's another great option so as that transitions out of warranty eventually 
at least I know that I have a comfort level for what that used luxury car is all about and it doesn't bother me so much. Maybe it'll be time to move it on, maybe it won't be. But either way, you've got to answer that question for yourself. In general as a whole, it's not for everybody, but it is for those that can, can stomach the financial commitment. And hopefully I was able to shed some light on it for you. And as well, be sure to click on that video that's going to introduce you to the worst depreciating luxury cars in 2020. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.